really what Grand Tech's trying to do here is that we know that there's their, your features and functions of Ignition and Cephasoft that you're going to get from, from your purchase of that software. But Grand Tech really has been working with customers delivering smart manufacturing and OEE systems for, for decades now. We know the ways that people like to see this information collected and presented to them. We, we think we have a lot we can add to that. So we've just put all of that together already so that you have a really great starting point for your OEE project. Some of our core design philosophies as we go into this. So we're really emphasizing out of the box functionality and, and trying to not customize as much as we can. So we're customizing form and format, not as much function. And the value of that is that it helps us keep you up to date as Ignition and Cephasoft continue to improve their products, right? There's less of a chance of rework as they continue to, to make their system updates since we've generally stuck to the core functionality. It also just gets you up there and running on day one, right? Um, we don't want to have to, to go through a lot of extra troubleshooting and testing and things like that. This is a, a pre-tested system. And then we can, of course, adapt it and grow it and change it as we need to based on your business needs, which is really how Grand Tech approaches MES projects in general, right? So Grand Tech does have, uh, if you go to our website, you can find a lot of information on our agile MES process, right? So we're taking those agile philosophies of software design and applying them to MES projects, including the OEE Accelerator, right? So that OEE Accelerator is your minimum viable product, your proof of concept, your proof of value, kind of whichever term you wanna use for that, but it's kind of that quick, okay, I can see how this might work in our environment, and then we can figure out how to adapt that to more processes or add more features that your company is gonna need before we get to a larger scale rollout. Now, one of the reasons that that accelerator quick time to value philosophy is so important with OEE specifically is that OEE is not should not be your end goal for an OEE project, right? OEE itself is a is a tool that you're going to use in a larger continuous improvement program, right? So OEE is just giving you the data and the information. So it's looking at all this information from your line. It's helping you contextualize that and kind of focus your efforts where you can have the largest impact and effect. But in itself, it's not really updating your process. You might get a little bit of a bump in performance from people realizing they're being measured and understanding kind of the, the measures and numbers that they're expected to hit. But really where you get the value of an OEE project is by looking at the data and using it to drive other projects or drive new behaviors, maybe even processes within your plants to, to actually improve the manufacturing operations. So, so many, so many people I see get stuck in kind of developing the OEE tool. They never get to that continuous improvement point. We want to beat that, uh, we want to beat that trend, right? We want to have our OEE accelerator giving you value very quickly so we can get to that fun, more continuous improvement part of things. So with that in mind, uh, I've talked about this thing enough. Let's go ahead and actually show it. So again, what you're going to see is our core performance management and downtime analysis out of the box. Everything you're going to see here is going to be in perspective. We do have a vision version of this as well, but perspective's the new hot thing. So we wanted to make sure that we showed that off. And what you're going to see are some operations dashboards, um, alarm and manual downtime entry, work order management, and scheduling, analysis, and configuration. So quite a few things to cover. I'm going to do a pretty quick version of it. If you want to get into more depth on this, ask more questions about how what our accelerator does or doesn't do or how this could adapt to your process. I'll give you some more information on how to get in touch with us uh, and we can do a one-on-one -on -one meeting down the line with Grand Tech. So hopefully everyone now sees our, our plant overview screen. Um, you'll notice that this is all just running in Chrome. Oh, sorry, that's my one note. <laughs> so this is all running in Chrome. This is all HTML5 uh, and we are just kind of running this through uh, a regular ISA 95 model, right? So you can see some of the, the elements of that here where this is our enterprise view and we can see all the places we have OEE installed. We have two sites. Each of those sites has their own production areas with their own independent production lines, right? And today we're gonna be focusing on Allentown production. And we're mostly gonna be focusing over here on line one. Sorry, we're seeing some of the data come in. So 
Uh, again, overview screen here, multiple, uh, you can see over the last 12 hours how our OEE has been over time. At For the area and site level, you know, that's more of a day-by-day -day granularity because we're looking at a bigger picture there. But let's dive in a little bit deeper and see how line one is running. So I'm going to go to our OEE dashboard. I'm going to pick that line. And uh, we're going to get some of our metrics coming up in here. Um, I do think this is running a little slower since I'm doing the presentation and the webinar and showing the demo, but just I'm, I'm sure you all get the, the sense of what's going on here. So uh, here's that line overview, right? And what we're show, what we're seeing here is OEE data in two different time frames. So up here at the top, we have our data for the current production run. And down here, we have it for just this first shift that we're in right now. So our production run has been much longer than the current shift. And we can see some kind of differences between the two time frames that we're working in, right? So in we have our overall OEE score. We have each of its component parts here in availability, performance, and quality. And I can actually even start to make some interpretations about this right now, which is interesting, right? So if I'm looking at our overall run, how we've been going for the since, you know, yesterday afternoon, I noticed that we were barely down. Our quality was pretty good, but we were running real slow, right? So that's maybe why we weren't having those breakdowns, maybe why quality was higher, because we were running the system in a, a slower, more controlled way. This more recent shift, we've really picked up those performance numbers, right? But in doing so, our availability has gone down and our quality has gone significantly down. So overall, production across those two time frames, honestly, kind of around the same, which is interesting, right? There's other information that we glean from this too, right? So we do get some information on the, the durations of the current run and the shift, how long we've been up and how long we've been down some numbers around actual production to feed into these uh, values over here, as well as some graphs kind of showing how we've been producing over time. One thing that's really important is this little running icon up here. So you might have noticed this kind of ticking uh, banner over here. The main dashboard here is gonna update once a minute, but this running icon is in real time because that downtime is so important for these OEE systems. So I just popped open our simulator over here and I'm gonna say simulate a fault over on our box closer. And with the way our simulator works, we can see that's blocking some of the, the work cells before it. So the second that I hit that, oh, see we have a big unplanned downtime banner up at the top. It says that our box closer is the root cause of that downtime. It's giving us the reason code that that is down. And we're gonna to start to accrue downtime in this little uh, line status history down here. In fact, if I expand this and dive into it a little more, you can see some of the downtimes that we've had earlier. So this is our overall line up here, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everything on the line was down at a given point. So you can see those breakdowns in this section here. I uh, see it's a little bit of red start to show up as we accrue downtime. And as you see, as I'm scrolling over these, it's telling me what the main causes of those downtimes were. So all really good stuff. On top of that, we do have alarm management within this. So of course you can click into the Allentown alarm banner here. I see I do have this unacknowledged alarm. I can go through and say, okay, I see that I'm gonna go fix my machine. I'll acknowledge it. I'm gonna come into our simulator and turn things back on here. And this alarm is gonna clear out of the system. And as I go back to my OEE dashboard, we're going to see that that banner is back to normal and we are back to normal production time. Yeah, there we go. See, back to running, looking good. So I want to dig into downtime a little bit more because, again, it's so important for these OEE systems. Of course, it's great to have these parts of availability, performance, and quality but really understanding your downtimes and why your line went down and where you should be focusing your, your maintenance or improvement efforts is, is such a huge part of these systems. And I can't even tell you the amount of times that we've installed an OEE system or, or, seen, or, or seen one that's been installed and it tells you that the number one reason for your downtime is unknown downtime, right? So we, we wanna fix that. We wanna be adding more information into the system. We wanna add more things that are used to be useful. So, we can go through and work on some of that. If I come into 
our, our run manager here, and I'm going to pick our line. Here we can see all of the downtimes that have happened for our current run. We can do this for other time periods too, like the last two or three runs. Let's stick to this one. And here are the downtimes that we have. Now, let's say, for example, that I wanted to add a manual downtime that maybe the system didn't collect, right? I have a whole interface to do that. I can say when it was down, I can pick my equipment. I can pick a default reason. I can even add my note right here to explain why and how that happens. I can also go through and edit some of the faults that have been automatically recorded by the system. So I have a 10 minute metal detector jam fault right here. Let's say that me as, as the maintenance uh, guy I'm, uh, who fixed this piece of equipment, I'm going in and saying, actually, no, that, that's not entirely right. I could change that equipment to, to something else. Or let's say actually that I want to split this downtime reason. I'm saying of these 10 minutes, really for the first five of those, that was something different. So I've split that event. This first one, this wasn't a, an unplanned downtime. I know what I was doing. I was training Steve. And we brought it down on purpose to, to try to do some training for him. Oops, I didn't mean to close it that quickly. I'll open it back up. I'm gonna change this to a planned downtime. And you can see it's recording all these changes as we go through it, right? So here's my note right here. It's denoting these were split and it's denoting that I overran this unplanned downtime with a planned downtime. And we can undo all of that too. So if I'm now the supervisor coming in saying, no, no, that's that's not true. That's not how I want to allocate that. I can, no, you weren't. I can put in some notes onto the, the downtime still. I can confirm that. I can even revert to the original reason. So it's now the overridden check went away. And I can even revert the split so that now it is all one event. It even kept my note in there too, which is nice. So the reason this is so important for a lot of OEE systems, right, is we, we don't want perfection to be the enemy of good, right? If we don't have great fault information coming out of our systems, or if we know there is going to be some, some manual intervention that happens, we don't want to stop our OEE project until we have completely perfected our automation systems we want to make progress with what we have, right? So even if you don't have all of the fault information from your system immediately, or even if there are mistakes that just naturally happen sometimes as, as we're working out some processes, you have the interfaces that you need to go through and, and do some of this manipulation that you need to in manual entry if that's valuable to you. And again, one of the reasons this is all nice, looking at all this downtime here in the chart, Yes, that's valuable, but but I want to kind of get a little bit more information. So I'm going to jump into our analysis selector over here. So I can come to our line downtime. I'm going to select line two because I know we have some good data in there. So what this is now showing, I'm even going to expand this time frame. Let's go to the beginning of last week. So as there we go, there's our chart. So as you can see here for each of these days now, I can see we were idle for a bit. We maybe tried to start up, but went down and, and had some issues for a couple of days with that before we were able to get the system up and running again, right? So, so good information on the downtime that we had. Since we were just playing on line one, I'm gonna jump in there and look at kind of our more, what we've been doing just today for the demo. So again, mostly have been running for the past couple of days but we do have some unplanned downtime in here and I wanna learn more about it, right? So I can click on this unplanned downtime, I can go into downtime reason, and now of those 17 occurrences, I'm getting more information on exactly what went down, right? So today, we've mostly been having an issue with the metal detector. Yesterday, it was more varied. Uh, the knife was jammed a couple of times, the metal detector was having issues, but our box closer was also an issue then too, right? So. This is kind of giving us, and there's all sorts of options around what you can drill down into here. You can slice this by what product you were running on the line and things like that. So a lot of power here. Again, we're not just collecting the data for fun. We're collecting the data so you can go into these analysis screens and, and really slice and dice it to get to the root of your problem and come up with an action plan on how to fix it. Okay, so that's a lot about alarms. It's a lot about kind of that, that overview screen. There's two more quick things I wanna show that come with the OEE accelerator. 
One is I just want to point out that we do have this configuration manager here. I'm not going to get into this too deep, but a lot of the things that you need to do for overall administration of this system are going to be right here in this portal. So you don't need to open up the designer. You don't need to have uh, a knowledge of how ignition works or training um, for a lot of things like managing the, the types of equipment that you might have, saying what types of shifts and uh, shifts and people that you have on those shifts, right? Even coming back, creating specific products and materials, right? You can do all of that right here if you have a new material or a new SKU that you want to run. And security as well, if you want to get into who has permission to do what's at what points, all right here within the application. Good stuff. The other thing, so I mentioned the different materials that you can run. There is a scheduling system within the OEE accelerator as well. So if I'm going to come back into here. I'm going to look at our scheduling tab. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. Again, I'm going to do a light touch here. We can go into more detail if you would like uh, in the future. Just reach out to us at infoagrantech.com. But what I really want to show is kind of what you can do in scheduling and what you need to do in scheduling because you don't need to do a lot. Uh, if you do not are not ready to kind of have a full scheduling system in here, or maybe you have another system of record that handles all of your scheduling and you don't want to immediately take on the complexities of tying into that, you don't need to run this in a scheduled mode. You don't have insights to some data like, you know, you won't know what material was running on the line to say, does my metal detector go down more running product A than product B? But you will still get your general OEE and downtime information and things like that, whether you run scheduled or not. Either way, um, we do have these schedules in here and all of these work orders that we have assigned, right? I can right click in our schedule and make a new entry. It's where I can say I'm going to run work order two and we're going to do it on line one for 500 units. And I'm going to save it. And it's going to auto calculate how long it thinks that's going to take and puts it into my schedule and we'll, we'll change over to that when we hit it. Uh, I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to delete that entry. Yes. We can also, again, if you're not maybe planning ahead of time or if you do have emergency uh, work orders that you need to fill, you don't need to have everything scheduled either. You can go into your production run and production control, select your line. And I can just say, you know, I need to be running a FG001 right now. And I can just start that change over right here from this screen. We can also schedule work orders that way too, if we need to. Again, I'm not gonna do that to mess up the data, but it's all an option that you have here. It also does support rolling changeovers or entire line changeovers. So, right, so if you're gonna say, I've run product A, now I need to clean everything out. Now everything's running product B at once. We can do that. If you are doing a rolling changeover, like in the beverage industry a lot, where you might run flavors back to back, you can handle that too as you index across different work cells of the line. So that is a lot of it. That is what I wanted to show. Again, coming back to this main screen here to see our overall OEE performance. But yes, that is Grantex OEE Accelerator and a lot of the features that you get for that out of the box.